don't worry, you've arrived just in the nick of time. That is my name. Welcome back to Flower Shop Summer in Fairbrook. We just got done doing the gardening mini game, weeding out our own very own special plot of land for Uncle. And now we're going to see if we can get the truck to go on the town, maybe see some honeys. He strolls amiably back to the farmhouse. Am I really being outdone by an old man? The kitchen is filled with the scent of something delicious, but I can't quite place it. What's that smell? Fresh meat and vegetable pie. Really? I've had meat pie before. It never smelled so good. Those frozen microwave pies are no match for a fresh homemade version. I devour dinner with little room between bites for discussion. It's more delicious than I expected. And after all the work I've done today, I'm starving. I don't think I've ever eaten so much before. Uncle doesn't seem to mind at all. He eats in silence, only stopping once in a while to throw scraps of food to Orpheus. Orpheus, in return, winds her way happily around his legs, not bothering to give me a second glance. It looks like the two of them are accustomed to each other's company. I feel like a third wheel here. Oh, let's not get into human cat stuff. I finish shoveling dinner into my mouth and head off to the kitchen where I give my plate a quick rinse. Good enough. I'm going to use the phone now. Don't spend too long talking. You need your sleep. Yeah, yeah. I dust off the phone before picking up the receiver. This thing is ancient. I quickly dial Jill's number and cross my fingers, hoping she'll pick up. Are we still calling our ex? To my surprise, she answers after one ring. Hello? Oh, uh, um, uh, hi. Steve, is that you? Uh, yeah, hey. I didn't expect you to call me so soon. Oh, oh, this is tough. This is tough. Uh, uh, I, I don't think she's ready to flirt with us. Uh, if we, if we want to stay on a good footing with her, we should make a joke. Well, uh, I would have texted you, but it's kind of hard on a rotary phone. Chill stifles a giggle. Yeah! Alright, alright, we're chipping away! We are chipping away! Witty as always. So how's life on the farm? Okay, uh, 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 talk about Uncle. Let's talk about it. Uncle Sam is an odd guy, if not very, very patriotic. He doesn't get mad like Pop does, but when he wants something done, there's no reasoning with him. And he's always got that cat hanging around. It's weird. Oh, he has a cat? Yeah, talk about the cat. He has a girl cat, but it's named Orpheus. That's a nice name. I don't know, that seems kind of weird to me. Why would you give a girl cat a guy's name? Maybe he just likes Greek mythology. Maybe. But if that's the case, why not name her Eurydice? Eurydice. Eurydice. See, I never could get that pronunciation right. Wow, I didn't realize you knew Greek mythology that well. Oh, we are scoring! I pay attention in class once in a while, you know. Do it more often and you might have something going for you. Oh, okay. Uh, we got a lot of things, uh, going for us, honey. We're, we, we chopped wood. Uncle made me chop wood this morning before breakfast. How did that turn out? <laughs> Let's just say that I think I'm a danger to myself and others. Well, I also pulled some weeds. Uncle made me pull all these weeds. Weeding is hard work. How did it go? Blah. I didn't even finish it today. You can't finish everything right away, you know. Yeah, but my back already hurts so much. The familiar sound of the dial tone blasts into my ears. What the? I look up to see Uncle. He pressed down the receiver button, cutting off like Uncle! What the hell? Time's up. Time to go to bed. We are trying to get back with our ex, Uncle, as any sane person does. Well, you didn't have to hang up like that. If I told you it was time to go to bed, you would have ignored me. So? That was still rude and uncalled for. Ugh. Steve, this is my house and my phone. 
You are living off of my generosity. Hardly. You're not being generous about anything. Go to bed now. Arg. Fine. I punch the kitchen door open, wincing a bit as my raw knuckles once again make contact with the rough wood. That's twice now we've punched this door with those raw knuckles. We are not the brightest tool in the shed. Orpheus yells in surprise and leaps from Uncle's shoulders, darting into a dark corner of the kitchen. I hope you're happy now. Go to bed. I march up the stairs and slam the bedroom door behind me. With an angry sigh, I toss myself onto my bed. Nack! Oh, right. This bed is like a rock. I roll over, trying to get comfortable. There doesn't seem to be much hope, though. I wrap my arms around the lumpy pillow and stare at the high ceiling. I've gotta get out of here. Uncle said that once I finish weeding that patch, I can use the truck. Oh, I've gotta finish weeding it first. Okay. All right. If I can just hang on long enough to get the truck, I can go anywhere I want. I can take the truck and run away from this stupid place. Where will I go? Blah. Like it matters. Anywhere is better than here. I fall asleep, pleased with my genius escape plan. Morning comes too soon, and Uncle isn't about to let me sleep through it. Once again, I'm greeted by piercing sunlight streaming through the windows. Time to wake up. I rub my eyes and roll across the rock I call my bed. Right, my escape plan. I do my best to put on a good face for Uncle. Good morning, Uncle. Good morning. Uncle Sam eyes me with a bit of suspicion, but he doesn't comment on my cheerful attitude. Breakfast will be ready soon. Sounds great. Do you want me to chop wood again? I'd rather you didn't. You're prone to hurt yourself. He reaches up and strokes Orpheus' head. Just get some food and water for Orpheus, okay? Sure thing. Uncle looks at me quizzically, but he leaves without saying anything. As he walks down the stairs, Orpheus leaps lightly off his shoulders and scrambles up the steps back to my bedside. She looks up at me with large, expectant eyes. Uh, hey, cat. Orpheus meows softly and rubs her head against my bedsheets. You're expecting your meal, huh? I stretch my arms and wince at the sudden pain. Ow! My body is so stiff! Yesterday's work must have been harder than I thought. I can barely lift my arms above my head and my back feels like it's carrying a thousand bricks. Orpheus meows again, pawing at the side of my bed impatiently. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I roll out of bed with a groan. This is going to be a long day. I stumble into the kitchen and dig around the cupboards looking for Orpheus's food. I finally find a cloth bag on a high shelf with Orpheus stitched into the side. I pull it from the cupboard and peer inside. It's filled with some odd lumps that look like miniature cookies. Is this yours? Orpheus responds my by bye that should be bye by winding herself around my legs a couple times. I guess so. I dump a handful of the lumps into one of the bowls near the door. Orpheus scampers over to it and begins to scarf down the food. I see how it is. Food is more important to you than I am, huh? She doesn't bother to look up from her meal. Yeah. Thank you for feeding Orpheus. Anytime. Uncle raises an eyebrow at me. Either way, it's time for breakfast now. Today's breakfast is oatmeal with honey, but it's thick and rich. Nothing like the microwavable stuff I'm used to having. This is really good! I'm glad you think so. The honey is from Susanna's store. Susanna? She owns a flower shop in town. Roll credits! But she does much more than just sell flowers. Is she cute? I'll let you be the judge of that. Huh? I need some more seedlings, so you'll have to go into town to get some. Like, right now? After you're done with breakfast, you can take the truck into town. I thought you said I couldn't use the truck until I cleared out the weeds. It's just a quick errand. Be careful not to get lost or go too far, though. There's not much gas left in it. 
He smiles at me pointedly. Me? Get lost? <laughs> like that would happen. Of course not. Can this guy read my mind or something? You can count on me. Well, there goes my escape plan. At least for now. Aw, oh, yeah, we get the truck already! The truck rumbles along the uneven road slowly, the gas needle hovering precariously above empty. Uncle said that it's only four miles into town, so there shouldn't be a problem. As I drive along the narrow road, I notice a girl up ahead jogging alongside the dirt-packed lane. As I get closer, I get a better view of her legs. Dang, those are nice. And her face? Cute. Definitely cute. Ah, what am I thinking? Staring at girls has already gotten me into enough trouble, and here I am doing it again. Still, it couldn't hurt to at least introduce myself. I slow down as I approach her. Hey there! Oh, she mad! Oh no, she mad! Oh, abort! 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 Mission! Mission is a failure! Abort! Alright, our first girl. Um, do I know you? Well, no, uh... All right, then. She turns away from me and returns to her truck, like any sane person would do. Hey, wait! What? Uh, my name is Steve. I'm new here. Well, welcome to Nowheresville, Steve. Your life is officially at a dead end. Can I go now? Oh, no, uh, I'm not living here, just visiting for the summer. I live in L.A. Of course I do. Los Angeles? It's nice to meet you, Stan. <laughs> Steve. Oh, right, Steve. I'm Clara. It's nice to meet you. Wow, talk about a change of heart. This girl is seriously bipolar or something. Yeah, nice to meet you too. So what brings you to the middle of nowhere? Are you being punished or something? Actually, yeah. Oh. Well, bummer. This place really is the dumps, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, it, it's kind of growing on me. Eh, it's not that bad. Are you kidding? I can't stand this place. It's like a million miles away from civilization. There isn't even anything to do here. The worst part is the fact that my dad somehow got into his head that I'm going to stick around and take over his farm or something. Your dad owns a farm around here? Yeah, it's the one by the by old man Sam's farm. Oh yeah? I guess that makes us neighbors. Neighbors, huh? Well then I guess I'll see you around, neighbor. Leaving so soon? Yeah, gotta finish my jog, you know. Right, well I'll see you later then. Probably. Oh ho ho ho! Clara turns and jogs off down a side path that branches off from the road. I turn the key in the ignition and follow the main road into town. The truck rumbles slowly into town and I scan the buildings. Wow, there really isn't much here, is there? I rub my head a little bit. The bumpy ride here has left me a little nauseated. That must be the flower shop that Uncle was talking about. Roll credits! Wait, they're playing the depressing music as we walk into the flower shop? <laughs> as I walk in, I'm overwhelmed by the fragrant smell of flowers. Ugh. The sweet smell isn't doing much to help my nausea. Hello? Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Hold up! Who's in a what's now? Look at this one! Uh, uh, uh... <clears throat> Welcome! Wow, another cute girl. Uncle wasn't kidding when he said there were some nice girls around here. This one is more like a slim princess than the nicely toned Clara, though. She looks so delicate. Uh, are you Susanna? I am, and you must be Steve. How do you know? Your uncle called ahead to say that you'd be coming by to pick up the seedlings he needs. I guess I could have figured that one out. Welcome to Fairbrook, Steve. Uh, thanks. Are you feeling ill? You don't look very well. Yeah, I guess I'm just not used to the pumpy roads here, so I got a little motion sick. Would you like some tea? 
Yes, 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 no, Steve! Nah, I think it's worse. I'll just take a pill or something. Take a pill? Uh, yeah? Are you trying to kill yourself? N no Then why on earth would you put something so unnatural into your body? Oh boy, you're not one of those weirdo hippies who thinks the earth is a spirit or something, are you? First, I'll thank you not to speak so irrelevantly of others. And second, no, I am merely a rational human being who doesn't see the benefit of pouring chemicals into your body. Yeah, well, those chemicals can help once in a while. And you're okay with side effects like nausea, vomiting, or liver failure? Not exactly. You know, mankind has survived for centuries with natural food and natural remedies. And these days, we have all sorts of medical and health issues that come from processed food and drugs. Why on earth would you do that to yourself? Alright, she's got a point. She's got a point. Well, I guess you have a point. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, she's cute. Of course I do. You really should treat yourself better, you know. I never thought about it. Well, you should stop thinking about it. In fact, come over whenever you like, and I'll make you something natural to eat. <laughs> really? Of course. I'd be happy to. Anyway... You should probably get back to your uncle. She hands me a cardboard box. Everything he wanted is in there. Thanks. I carry the box out to the truck. Man, this thing is heavy. And my shoulders are still sore from all that work. What's in this thing anyway? I dump the box in the back of the truck and stretch my arms, taking in the layout of the town. Fairbrook really is a small place. In fact, the only building that really stands out is the library. I glance at my watch. It isn't even noon yet. Uncle doesn't need me back that soon, does he? Uh-oh, looks like we're going to deviate from Uncle's wishes. And we're going to do that next time. This is great, guys. This is great. We've already met two girls, Clara and Susanna. Uh, and we're gonna, I, we might meet another one at the library. Time flies when you're having fun, right? So until next time. Remember, guys, do the best that you can with the time that you've been given.